the original N2400 features a second order filter on the woofer and a first order filter on the tweeter. Don't ask me why. Uh, in addition, they added two 5 ohm resistors to pad the tweeter down about 6 dB, and then an L pad attenuator on top of that to protect the tweeter. Seems to me if you wanted to protect the tweeter, you would have used a second order network on the tweeter and a first order on the woofer. But anyway, this is what they did. So I'm not a fan of L pads, but which I'll talk about later. So I'm taking that out uh, and simply bypassing it and replacing those ancient capacitors with brand new ones. So here's the N2400 crossover from JBL. We're gonna rewire this thing today, yank out this L pad. These things always go bad. There's no nothing good that you could do with an L pad. So we're just gonna pull it out, take the back cover off, pull out a whole bunch of foam and inside you'll find two capacitors from the 1960s. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about these. So I've got some really good metal foil caps here to replace them. These are 2% tolerance. These are good thing, good caps. And a little tiny, a little tiny transformer. Do you think that can handle a lot of power? I don't think so. So we've got a better, uh, a better inductor here, a lot heavier, a lot beefier. Uh, and I've got my schematic here. It's basically the same, except we're pulling out the L-pad and we're just gonna bypass it completely. So here we go. So here's the finished crossover before putting the foam back in. Uh, so there's the two 5 ohm resistors that give you the hardwired uh, 6 dB pad and the capacitor for the woofer, inductor for the woofer, and the treble capacitor. All ready to be tested out. I'm going to give you a reason why I didn't keep the L-pad in there. Uh, you don't need an L-pad. It's really there because, well, you, some people may have preferred more treble, more bass. You can adjust that on your receiver. You can adjust that through equalizers. You really don't need this. The other thing is these things never work. After 20 years, the, the resistor in here gets all gummy or gets all uh, dirty and stuff and you lose your treble completely. You've got no treble whatsoever. And you, then you have to go back in and twist this knob like a hundred times. And then you'll get your treble back if you're lucky. It'll be scratchy. It'll never sound quite right. And a lot of people will just replace these with a Chinese L-pad. Well, guess what? This was made in America 60 years ago. I don't think the Chinese one is going to last as long as this one did. So just get rid of the L-pad. It's worthless. Put in resistors that you like and do all your equalization or your base treble adjustments uh, from your source. I think that's the way to go. So here we have two lines together, uh, the orange and the blue. The orange one has the tweeters phase inverted from the blue one. And this was just sort of to see where the uh, cutoff point was for the crossover. It's right around two and a half kilohertz, right where we expect it to be. So that's a good sign. Uh, but it doesn't help at all inverting the phase. You still get a big bump and a trough there that's even worse than uh, when it's in phase. It did nothing for uh, upper and the upper frequencies in around seven kilohertz or above. So it was a good experiment, but I think we'll just keep the tweeter in phase for now. Here we have the original crossover in green uh, set at four, which is somewhere a little bit past the middle of the of the L-pad point. And we have the blue curve, which is the modified crossover with no resistor padding. It's just, uh, just a capacitor, basically. The treble's looking pretty hot, and uh, we do still have a spike here at uh, 1.5 kilohertz, but there's really nothing that we expect can be done about that. That's really with the woofer. Now with the purple curve here, uh, this is the original crossover with the tweeter maxed out, and so this is basically 6 dB less. Uh, still has no effect here at 1.5 kilohertz, uh, but uh, the, the, uh, we get about 6 dB less at the high frequency end. Uh, in this purple curve here. 
And so this is pretty much what I'm going to target for my crossover. I'll, this basically bypasses the L-pad attenuator entirely uh, and keeps the two 5 ohm tweeter padding resistors where they are. And this is how I'm going to go ahead and build it. Now here we have the uh, purple curve, which is the original crossover with a max tweeter. And now we've got the orange curve, which is the new crossover uh, with just that pad resistor in there. Here we compare the right channel in orange with the left channel in green. Actually matches up not too bad. Uh, the upper frequencies here, it's a little bit uh, spikier for the treble. There's a little bit more in the mid-range here for the bass, uh, but I could probably increase the volume level a little bit to compensate for that. Uh, the treble is a little spikier there on the green curve, and I think that's attributable to the very directional characteristics of the 075 tweeter. Uh, it's just I can hear it when I when I move off axis it sounds dramatically different. So what I should have done here is averaged a whole bunch of data points for the tweeter and that probably would have given me a smoother curve uh, for both of the high frequency channels. I'm pretty surprised how well the low frequencies match uh, and so I'm really happy with that actually. Uh, so I think some of the adjustments could be done maybe for the tweeter but may not be needed. Giving these vintage JBL speakers a second life was really a fun project. These things are amazing back from the heyday of American manufacturing. Good old 1960s speakers. Great stuff.